Hey gardeners, it is December 24th, 2023. Yard is definitely starting to look like winter is here. Leaves are dropping and trees are going bare. You can see I've removed all of the container plants, all the plumerias from the pond area. They're now in my garage, along with the Jamaican cherry. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an update on this tropical house that I built cold frame for my more sensitive plants. For those of you that may have missed my summer video where I went into detail on the build of this, it is made out of one inch EMT conduit and leverages flat angle roof connectors, both on the bottom and the top. 2.5 ounce frost cloth. So coming inside the structure, just wanna point out a few things. I had started with a plastic roof and I even put in some implements to help push the center point up um, with the thought that the rain would fall off the sides. The reason I had put plastic on was to try to keep it dry in here. And that was because I was gonna run a heater in the event we got really cold. I haven't needed to do that because the lowest we've gotten is 36 in my area. However, that did not work out. Uh, the water pooled. So using a flat roof connector is just not good if you're gonna um, use plastic. I thought the clamps would be heavy enough to keep that and they just they ended up slipping with the weight of the water. So if you are planning on getting a cold frame and putting plastic over it to keep it dry inside, I recommend getting something with a pitched roof because this didn't work out great for that. So there is an advantage of just using the frost cloth and that's so that the rain can go through. Um, tropicals of course love our rain, you know, lower pH, definitely much better water for them than city water. So by now allowing the rain to reach them, that's a good thing for these plants. And it really would be rare for us to get rain and then immediately frost. As far as the heater, I still need to keep that dry in the event that I you know, run that and we have rain. So I'm gonna just get a little portable shelter here to put the heater under instead of trying to make the entire thing dry. As far as effectiveness, of this frame I have been monitoring the temperature the last few weeks and I will say that this frost cloth has increased the air temperature in here by six degrees. So another thing to note is just that the environment in here is very high humidity around 80 percent and that's because how thick the, this frost fabric is. While air exchange can happen it is trapping more of that moist air in here. So I think the plants are liking it they're putting on you know new growth as a result. Um, even the uh, coffee plants that I thought would not be able to tolerate, you know, under 50 degrees is putting on new growth and looking pretty good. Peanut butter fruit, you know, is putting on new growth. Chibota cava. Um, also the sapodilla, you can see. So quite a few plants are enjoying the warmer temperatures in here and able to, to still grow during this time of the year. So again, we haven't seen those low, low temperatures, but so far I'm pretty happy with uh, the structure and how the plants look in here. So another thing I do at this time of the year when the fig leaves really fall in a large mass is I'll just kind of finish off the job and then pick all the fruit off the tree. I like to do that because number one, I gotta get these trees prepped for selling cuttings. So I don't want fruit or any of that stuff on there. Uh, the other thing is while the fruit will fall on its own, I, I want to prevent that because if you allow fruit to hit the ground, a lot of bugs, pest bugs, uh, that will become an issue for you in springtime will actually overwinter inside the fruit. Provides them a food source and a place to keep warm. So I'd rather not provide that environment for bugs. So you can see the Chicago Hardy's all cleaned off. Uh, it's Panache Tiger. All my fig trees I went through and cleaned them off. Many of you are interested in grafting your trees. So just a quick tip on this. This was my raspberry latte that I top worked in spring. You can see where this grayish wood is. That's all the old wood that I grafted onto. And then this brownish wood, I don't know if you can make out, that's the graft point. Here's another graft point. These were all put on in February and you can see how much wood was produced from that graft point. It's very vigorous. 
the reason why these grafts were allowed to be so vigorous is because I left absolutely no rootstock on this tree. You can see some more grafts here. Every single graft put on this tree is pretty tall up into the air, you know, multiple branches and around 10 feet of growth. And the only reason that they were supported that way is because it wasn't competing with the tree's own genetics. When you graft onto a plant, the host tree is always going to want to favor its own growth. And if you allow just one branch to grow, that will take off and your grafts won't get the energy they need to do well. One thing to look out for is if you are growing peach trees is something called shot hole or leaf curl, bacterial leaf spot. Uh, it's basically a pathogen that affects the tree and peach trees are really susceptible to it. If you see red blotching on the leaves, you want to treat it so that that bacteria does not completely invade your tree and kill it which actually happened to one of my older peach trees in the past. So I do take the effort every year around this time to go ahead and hit my peach tree with a copper fungicide. It is certified for organic gardening. If you're concerned about your soil life, you can always put uh, some plastic down, to, but this is a good time to spray it. You know, once the tree has fully dropped its leaves and it's dormant, and then again, I like to spray it right before bud break in spring. And another thing I do for my fig trees at this time is, again, because I'm selling cuttings, and also just for the general health of the tree, is I'm going to hit it with this 3-in-1 fungicide. This actually has neem oil at its base. You can see it's just one of those hose end sprayers. So you just, um, you know, screw your hose on, and then there is a turn valve there that mixes the contents of the steam oil with your water in the right ratio. And I just basically go down and spray the entire tree, all the bark of the tree. That ensures that, you know, really bugs, again, scale, aphids, anything like that are not gonna overwinter on the tree. This will also, of course, eradicate any um, fungus. You could just buy neem oil, you know, and mix it in with water yourself. I just find this a little bit more convenient having it in the, the hose application. Uh, makes it very quick. I don't have to even think about uh, mixing ratios. But if you have straight neem oil, you could do one tablespoon of neem oil to one gallon of water. And then, you know, just put that into a sprayer and hit your trees with that. Uh, if we have a really rainy season, like we did last winter, I will use uh, this product too on my tropical. So it is safe to apply this to your evergreens. I try to do it as preventative on my mangoes to prevent black spot, anthracnose, any kind of mildew or fungus issue. Got into it a little too late, I might then go to a copper fungicide, but this is more or less my, my first line of defense using the, the neem oil, since it does also take care of the pests that can um, spread bacteria from plant to plant as well. Wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.